Welcome to the Featured Anime Podcast. I'm your host, Jack. And I'm Rick. And today we are talking about uh, that time I got reincarnated as a slime, which was uh, kind of a uniform choice, kind of a both us choice type thing. We talked about it, discussed yeah. it and decided to roll with it is what we ultimately ended up deciding. Right. Yes. No, maybe. I think Some, so. Hope. I hope. Like, originally, I was like, we should totally do it, mainly because I wanted to rewatch it. Yeah. But uh, when you agreed, it made it even better. Right. Uh, but before all that, we were uh, honestly talking about our experience, uh, first time streaming on Twitch, which is where we're going to be live streaming from now on for all the show recordings and everything like that. Uh, talked a little bit about Yu-Gi-Oh and some other things. If you want to catch a part of that wider conversation, you can join us live or you can go to patreon.com slash featured anime podcast. A dollar a month will get you access to that bonus content and more. And now on to the uh, me and bro Uh That time I got reincarnated as a slime came out in October 2018, ran all the way through March 2019. Producers for it are Atlantis, uh, Kodansha, BS11, Bandai Namco, just to name a couple. Studio for it is 8-Bit. It's based off of a manga. The genres for it are action, adventure, comedy, fantasy, and isekai. And it's uh, 24, I want to say, actually, I want to say 25 episodes. Because, uh, yeah, it's like, and the, half is what they call it. Yeah, which is basically a recap through um, Vildora's uh, perception as to what's going on and everything that's happening within that world for him. Uh, kind of a nice. I, I thought it in my mind it wasn't just a recap, but it was a retelling from a different person. Well, uh, you just said that, but I thought it was a really nice perspective. But from from someone who's basically fangirling. Yeah, yeah. In a manner of speaking, yeah, that's actually that's that's almost exactly what he was doing. He was. Uh, basically fangirling the the entire time which yeah i mean I, it is what it is i loved every second of it but anyway. um uh, all right so the basic of the story right is you have a man who's who becomes uh rimaru the main protagonist of the story uh he's in his 30s he's meeting one of his junior co-workers to to kind of go out on a on a I want to say like lunch dinner type thing or whatever. And, you know, he's kind of tired of his monotonous lifestyle. He's never had a, a girlfriend or anything like that. And so while they're out, a dude just run is running through the street, holding a knife in front of him, I guess to hope to, so that way he hopefully stabs someone. And so Rimuru ends up saving uh, his uh, younger uh, friend or intern or whoever right? His younger counterpart and gets stabbed in the process and dies. Well, while he's dying, he's saying like, he wishes he wasn't cold. He wishes he wasn't hot. He wishes this, he wishes that, how much this and that. And so this system starts stating exactly like what it's going to grant him basically in the next life. And as a result, he gets reincarnated as a slime, as the, as the title would, <laughs> would entail, like as, as it was suggested. Would Right. So yeah. uh, this story is the entirety of him being a slime. And it's not that he's just a slime and he's slowly going through w the world. He has a consciousness. He has his life experiences and he's taking that and applying it to the new world he's in. And he not he, him not understanding the rules of the world or anything like that is just like kind of progressing through. And he is crazy strong for a slime and this is like insanely strong to the point to where well, you're like eh, you 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 shouldn't be that strong for a slime well think of it like this here's the best way i can describe what actually happened let's say you're playing a game and you don't know there's more levels you just know that you're in a enemy rich location and after a little bit, you're able to assimilate these other powers. You're able to learn and, and consume, and you have a unique skill called, what was it? Predator? Predatory? Yeah. Something like that? And whatever you eat, you gain their powers. Now, if you were to make that game and I, I would play it, I would assume well, I would eat everything I could, just like happens to be, here. 
To be fair, it's but, just it doesn't just like he just doesn't gain their powers. He gains the abilities to mimic them and other things. So he can break down anything using it mm-hmm. and find out the details and traits of it and even recreate or copy it. Assuming he already ingested the materials, he basically has an unlimited size item bag in his stomach that he can house anything in of yeah. any size at all in all honesty like he he will eventually it take, may take a long time for him to get to it to consume it but he is able to consume it and it's so nice um and the way that just like you said it's kind of like a, a an item bag if he can take it he, or if he can eat it and he can decompose it he will gain its benefits so basically you're in a level one area and you're farming to, to your heart's content. We, do you know how long he was there? I feel like it was a couple years. He was just consuming and farming and consuming and farming because he didn't have any eyesight. He didn't know what was going on. He was just happily content in his level one zone, so to speak. Uh, and then, they don't specify a time frame for it. They don't talk about the timing for it at all. You just, when you're given a reference of time for it, it's very vague. And when you're given like a hard timeline for it, it's when uh, Rimuru comes in contact with Veldora, who yes. at that point um, says, I've been here for 300 years and I would likely die uh, in another hundred years because of this. And mm. so you're, you know, you're given that expectation, that viewpoint to where, OK, well, he is trapped in there. He's he's uh, not trapped. I want to say he was sealed away. And because of him being yeah yeah, confined because of this, he's not able to regenerate his magic or anything like that, which is causing him to die. But it's Mm -hmm. not a it's not a fast death. He's been there isolated and alone for 300 years, unable to have a conversation. But since Rimuru is there, he was able to have that conversation, but he's still not able to break out of the barrier. And so thanks to his ability, he's able to, to consume it and compress it and move on. Consume yeah. the barrier, take Veldora inside of him after they've had a conversation. Now, what I thought was really, really, really interesting was while, yes, Veldora is very powerful, the barrier around him be, it doesn't really consume its own ma- uh, Veldora's magic. It does prevent him from regenerating the magic, yes, but I feel like it's sapping it away and giving it to the surrounding area, yes. which is why the, the area that he was in was so rich in, in magic energy in these crystals that he's able to compress into regenerative juice and, and energy and stuff like that. And that's one of the reasons why he was able to become as powerful as he was. Yes. Um, but after talking with um, Fuldura, he's like, I could probably analyze this from the outside and the system, which is incredibly helpful to him, allows him to learn a bunch of stuff such as seeing the, the magic around him, visualizing it and then creating eyeballs and right. seeing stuff like that. Well, they visualize just, the eyeballs, but he doesn't technically have eyeballs. He's, yeah. you know, he, it's just what he's, what the, the creators decided to uh, visually represent, right? To give him to, mm. to help. Cause you know, just looking at a blob that doesn't give any kind of facial expressions or things like that is kind of, Oh yeah, no, no. Blah, I, I understand you know? that it's mainly for us, but, um, what I was trying to like imply was Rinmaru, while he's not able to use his faculties typically, right. Once he gains the ability and the power to replicate other beings, then he can use the optical thing. And I think it even says in episode one or two, like, wow, I did these thing, things, things look different. I prefer to see it the way I saw it before because I got used to that. Um, it's one of the reasons why you can't sneak up on him. Cause that, that vision is always active. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I get that. Um, the other thing is, and, and they, I'm glad that they touch on it. I'm glad they talk about it. And they make this distinction very early on in like the sec- first or second episode when uh is talking to Rimuru and they further expand on it and clarify it is, and you're even showing this at the very beginning too, that people come to their world through two other means, through two means. One, they, they are summoned or they are reincarnated. And Mm. I'm assuming the reincarnation aspect of it is not as common as people being summoned, but it is common enough to where they know about it, right? That, or they're not, it's not that they're 
uh, reincarnated as a monster, they're reincarnated typically as humans who become, go on to become heroes. And yes. for him to be reincarnated as a monster, I think is an unusual aspect. It's an unusual viewpoint of it. Mm. Well, you know, I, so this is going to sound, I know I'm, I'm backtracking just a little bit, but I find it to be humorous and, and kind of important when he stabbed initially, when he's going through the whole death process, the funniest part in this whole show to me is he's begging his his counterpart just delete my computer. Like yes. Clean it because, and I think that comes into play when it's choosing what abilities. He goes, well, I haven't been ever been with a woman, so I'm probably a grandmaster wizard. OK, those abilities have been granted. I'm cold. I don't want to be cold. Those abilities to, to be neutralized. OK, I don't want to be hot. No problem. Electrocuted. No problem. Yeah. He gets yeah. all these resistances. And. When it's going through that system, when it's like, okay, you're going to get this power, you're going to get this power, you're going to get this power, and like, we're going to give you a unique power. It, you envision, before you get to see anything, this monster, this absolute unit of a being, and then it's a slime. Yes. But it's a, it's a slime with all of this ability and power. At, at, and resistances. Like level one with, yeah, with yeah. resistances and stuff like that. And you don't think of that. So whenever anybody meets Rinmaru in his slime form, they're like, oh, it's nothing. But after he consumes Voldura, he ends up emitting this power that he's just walking. He's well, not he's rolling, I should say. And everything and everybody around him sees the aura. They don't see him. He's 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 insignificant. Everybody's running away because well, they they see this power. Just so here's the thing, right? Let me let me cut you off. So like they see the power, but is that his power that he's radiating? His power that he's seeing, or is he seeing? Are they seeing Veldora's power, or are they seeing a mixture of the two? Because it's not just him that he's like carrying around. And they were, and it's not like while he was sealed, they weren't able to sense Veldora. They were able to sense him still, even though he was sealed away. And that's what kept a lot of the monsters and everything in check is because he just radiated this aura, right? Mm -hmm. This control, like somebody who's in charge. Right. So, so my question is, right. And I know you're, you're not going to have an answer. It's just like, I don't have an answer is, is like, was that just his, he was radiating or was it everyone else's? And I know that they insinuate that they kind of tease that it was his, Mm -hmm. but was it personally i think it was and here's why i think it was he actually uh in a comment section old man jeb um said something very good the Valdor's power and naming it's a combination so when he can cons- when they when they became friends they named each other and in this anime naming has a, an immense power a now, if you're strong enough benefits too if you're strong enough to name somebody you are indicating you're stronger or at least stronger or the same level as they are. Voldura named him and he named Voldura in a mutual naming pact. That's why you, when that happens, you see them shine and stuff like that. And yeah, yeah. what's kind of awesome is in my mind and the, the way I think they kind of said it, anything he consumes becomes a part of him. Now, yes. he consumed the shield that was containing Voldura. But he so, he is not able to make it a part of him. So that's the other thing that no, you need to remember. Th- he true, consumed it so he, that way he could analyze it so that mm-hmm. way they could figure out how to break it. But that's but never remember, touched on beyond that than them continuing to try to do that in the show. Like he consumes it yeah. and, and moves on. Now, I'm assuming like yeah. just just uh, especially from episode uh, which one was it where he it's like episode 12 or something like that halfway through. Mm-hmm. Um when he consumes Ifrit and he, he and Veldora are fighting. So I'm assuming at that point, at some point the shield had broken. It's just, he can no longer let Veldora out. No, no, that, that, that hasn't happened yet because that it, in this, in this one, no, it, I know it hasn't that happened that yet. I am saying like at what, like, because if you remember in 24.5, right. Mm-hmm. He is sitting with Ifrit making the moves like he is sitting directly across from him. He's able to interact with him in a manner of speaking. Mm -hmm. There is no shield in between them. And it's not like he is saying or and it's not like I'm saying, oh, the shield's just gone now. I'm saying that it eventually got 
to the point where he was no longer being being housed in there and he just can't let him out. Right. It's he can't let him out because one, you know, maybe he just doesn't know it wasn't notified or something like that. Or Vildora was able to pull him inside the barrier with him, which doesn't make sense because he's able to, if I remember correctly, isn't he still able to kind of use Ifrit? Yes. Yeah, so Ifrit becomes absorbed into his, um, into him. Like Ifrit isn't sealed like Vildora was. He, the only thing that remains was the psyche that Vildora was able to seal. Like he was able to take away from the power because anything that, that, uh, that Rimuru eats due to predator or predatory, um, he consumes entirely and it becomes part of him. Part of, part right. of his power. Uh, Everything in our chat is- helps clarify that he can choose to either fully consume it or house it. Uh, and Jeb then clarifies also the unlimited imprisonment is not broken. If it is a spirit and while they are both inside, it's a shared space. Thank you. Now, what I was trying to say was the in my mind he consumed the the barrier right and as we were saying before the barrier was leeching power off of Voldora and giving it to the surrounding area so my logic part or the, to make logic out of that the shield didn't stop siphoning power off of Voldora it just gave it to Rinmaru directly which is why i think his power was like that was his own power rather than they were seeing Voldora's power because remember when Voldora mm. was consumed everyone was like oh he must have died. We can't sense his power anymore. So that's why I thought that it okay. was actually Rinmaru's power rather okay. than a, a mixture. I'll buy it. I'm down for that. I'll accept it. So, but yeah, no, it was it, what was interesting I don't think, to me. Yeah, is, uh, let, let me rephrase. I'll, I'll, I'll mm-hmm. take the part that Vildora's power is completely gone. I will not take the fact that it, that you're saying that it's going to um, Rinmaru. Rinmaru. Yes. Okay, so in your in the way that you see it, the the shield stopped doing what it was doing, or the the ceiling stopped doing what it was doing the no, second I it was think, consumed. Because- I, th- I don't think Rimaru's absorbing his power. That's what I'm saying. It's still being kind of leached out to him. I just don't think that it's that Rimaru's own power is overshadowing and masking Vildora's. Okay, it's so tough because I have more knowledge than just season one, and I'm not supposed to use it for here. So I'm trying to justify in the space of the first season. You and I both have the exact same knowledge. Yeah, I know. But I'm not having that hard of a time because because you have the ability to compartmentalize. For me, it's all one thing and it's great. Um, it's not great. It's, it's kind of annoying. Well, it depends on perspective. Uh, so, yeah, CJ oh, says uh, Rimuru is trying to analyze and destroy the shield, but he isn't using Veldora as a battery, so to speak. Uh Rimuru is OP as hell. Uh, and then Jeb further clarify, also further clarifies Veldora's power is being absorbed by Rimuru. The unlimited imprisonment can still leak his power. That's why the beasts behave, behaved in the forest. So CJ is, is kind of like gr- agreeing with me. Jeb's agreeing with you. Uh, and then CJ says, if you have more knowledge, you would know that that's not the case, sir. <laughs> well, I mean, just such well, anger it's, it's for a post show right okay it's there the you go post we'll show, save it for the post in, show there you go season two is still right yeah. around the corner okay let's yeah, not forget season, about season that i'm hoping like next week hopefully we'll see it is um so there you but, go you so, already know what next week's choice is congratulations <laughs> just, um, yeah, just hint hint nudge nudge hint hint nudge nudge um, but aside from the power scale which i found immensely pleasurable i liked how everything was done in here uh, uh, up until this point um, past that, they stopped talking about how strong he is because it's already known he's in, he's crazy strong, and he was able to suck in kind of all of the uh, uh, power that was just emanating, so that no one can know it's him anymore. Well, it's you know not I mean? that he sucked in the power; he just th- that's the visualization they gave. He just basically mm. sealed his power from emitting. You know, because the reference that he said was. Oh, I've been walking around. It's like I've been walking around with my fly down the whole time. Yeah. Just and no one's <laughs> like pointing it out, like, hey, bro, you're totally just showing yourself off there. And so he then at that point controls it to keep it, you know, from leaking out. It's not that he decides to he's emanating it still and then he's in an f- infinite feedback loop where he's sucking it in. He's just like out there wandering around with his fly open. 
you know mm-hmm. he's not a, he, he's concealing and that that's a good way to put he's concealing his power rather than walking it letting it all hang out um and <laughs> what i found really interesting is he starts willy-nilly naming everything and getting everyone's loyalty oh yeah and he you you see these these goblin things just these these wretched just barely better than animals just old decrepit leader all that stuff and he starts naming everybody and then passes out he wakes up to everyone looking a million times better than they were with power that is unrivaled in their race um and uh it was it was wonderful and, and he was able to gain a following and then every issue that he ran into he either consumed it to become stronger or he made them an ally also to become stronger and the right. world building that it, that occurs in the first 12 episodes i found to be really really well done like if this was a game i would buy it a hundred percent of the time i would play it a hundred this there, was there Final is Fantasy a game of it, so don't tell mind. me that don't tell me that you wouldn't play it a hundred percent of the time because there is a game out there for it if i remember correctly for it yeah not of it like a, this this reminds me of final fantasy not not the gotcha pond stuff on like because i played that one too okay so when you say okay okay i don't think i'm truly understanding what you're trying to talk about then when you say the game but we'll get into that later on um okay what's what's really cool and to continue on with the story right uh when he's going around and to piggyback off what you were saying is you know the naming aspect of it and where he's able to gain the the respect and and everything in the names also hold a lot of power but when he names them he's uh basically evolving them but he's also naming people that have more power more magic or whatever be beyond him too and when that happens he ends up passing out especially when he uses names too many people he passes out because of it because they just have a larger mana pool or something like that i can't remember the exact uh, discussion were because it happened when he was naming the ogres. Do you remember exactly mm -hmm. what, what they were talking about when he, when he passed out and why that happened? Yes. Basically every time you name something, you, you, you share your power with them and vice versa. So basically if I was to name you, my power would be given to you mix and come back. And so you would go to, you would go to your maximum and I would take your maximum and add it to my own. That doesn't so seem right. Power, that doesn't seem right. But the reason why he passed out was the stronger beings you name, the more mana it takes. And yes, he ran that out. is correct. The, um, the, the, the him taking the mana, that's not correct. Like, I know for a fact he doesn't do that. He doesn't take it, mix it, and then spit it back at them. Well, then how does he get a, a much larger mana pool by naming people? He doesn't get a larger mana pool by naming people. It draws on the mana pool by naming people. So he adds them as a battery? What? No, he, he so doesn't add anyone as a battery. He literally uses his magic, his, his magic in general, to name mm -hmm. them. And so he's using magic to name them. And it's causing his okay, ma so magic to drain. Maybe I misunderstood because I thought when he named something, he became stronger as well. No, no. No, that, that, was, never, that was never discussed or talked about. Like they, they never inferred that. So CJ says every time he levels up his health and magic go up, it's like a game. So hmm, then yeah, I, when I have he, a when very severe misunderstanding. Then Yeah. So w what you're thinking is, is like when he uses the predator mode and he absorbs someone to get their powers and everything like that, he's gaining strength like that. He's becoming more powerful like that. As he continues on, he will continue to gain, get stronger and everything like that. But it's not like he doesn't gain strength to name them, which is why monsters aren't typically named because it serves them no benefit to name them like at all. Like there is there, if that were the case, people would be going around naming every monster they possibly could that didn't have a name or trying to rename them. Right. It's because if that were the case, there would be no unnamed monsters, right? Because someone could go around at that point and start naming themselves and, and leveling themselves up and continuing on to level themselves up at that point. And that's not, a, not how it's done. Uh, Jeb in our chat also says he does absorb some of their skills, but shares them with all of them uh, that has named. That's interesting. 
So explain this. How was he able as a slime to name Valdura? Don't you have to be stronger than somebody to name them? Uh, why well, didn't that's he one pass of the things, when that happened? Right. And that's one of the things that he says, right? Or that they talk about in the in the show is when he's going through and he's naming someone that's stronger than him or has a larger mana pool than him or something like or or they specify a particular strength than what he currently has, he passes out, right? Basically goes into quote unquote autopilot mode for the duration and then that's it. So when he named the five ogres, six ogres, he um he uh passed out and doesn't remember what actually happened. But he, as far as the skills, he doesn't gain any added skills from naming anyone. He just, he just, you know, grants them power. And again, if, because if that were the case, he would be, uh, everyone would be naming everyone because everyone would be getting skills and becoming more powerful. I see. Okay. So something just clicked. Um, CJ in the chat says he got stronger by, by Voldora because he ate all those magicules that he thought were just stones. So. In my mind, here's how I can rationalize that. Baldura was there for 300 years. He thought he'd only have 100 years left, which means three quarters of his strength was dispersed into that cave, which Rinmaru was able to consume. So that's how he was able to get a stronger mana pool or a larger mana pool because he absorbed three fourths of what Baldura did. That's why he didn't pass out when he named him. Does that sound like it might be, it might work? Well, Baldura was also already named, right? So Valdora, from my from my visual perception, didn't glow or anything like that. He's just like, oh, I now have a last name because he's Valdora Tempest instead of just Valdora. Mm. Rimuru, however, was given the name Rimuru Tempest. So he was named named and he gained was stronger like that. OK, so technically so adding one name in addition to doesn't take as much magic. No, he, he didn't name Veldora. Veldora is just like, oh, I will totally run with this name. He didn't technically name him. It's just what Veldora is going to go around calling himself from now on. Uh, okay. I could have sworn in the animation you saw everything light up, but maybe, I'm, maybe I misunderstood that. CJ says that Veldora just added to the quali- quantity of production of Magicule rocks rather than the fact that they're there, because apparently they're just there, but in smaller portions. Valdura losing his magic made the quantities become greater. And when Rinmaru was in that cave and consumed everything he could find, he accidentally became massively powerful just off based off of the surroundings. OK, so that makes sense. So I was wrong in the sense in, in my thought process that by naming somebody, you got stronger. Um, interesting, though. Interesting that four ogres were stronger than Valdura as far as like the, the need to name. Yes, and and then again, they also and CJ also confirms this too that naming someone is dangerous because if you don't have enough power, you can actually die from it. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, but he names a bunch of things, a bunch he of does. people, a bunch of a, a, everything he comes in contact with. He's like, you need a name. Well, uh, um, and there's there's a reasoning behind it. It's not like he's just naming people course. just to name people willy nilly. He's he's doing it because one to create the create a society and make it so that way it's more human like. And that's kind of what he's modeling after since he used to be human. And he goes on to clarify this in the show as well. He's also going around and creating ties and, and treaties and, and he's creating those relationships with everyone, despite him being a monster. And so instead of people just like going out there, killing monsters just because, or in general, when they have a certain level of intelligence, he's not like going up there and naming an ant. Right. One mm-hmm. of the giant fire ants or whatever. He's just yeah, he's naming, naming allies. Yeah. He's he's naming people that are of an intelligent and sentient mentality. So you have uh, basically a sub group of of species. So you have humans, quote unquote, monsters, even though they're not really monsters. And then you have monsters. Right. Yeah. So and the people that he's naming are the people that are of an intelligence. They're able to progress they're able to think and talk and communicate and things like that and so they they you know are able to strategize and things like that and those are the ones he's making the ties with those are the ones that he's maintaining contact with and and he's helping grow and name and everyone else is like just a normal monster so they're going out there they're still slaying like the deer of the world you know they're going out there they're harvesting Mm. they're fishing they're all that other stuff 
Now, I thought was quite interesting in my mind was his whole objective. Rimuru's objective, the entire show, is he just wants to live a peaceful life. And in order to live that peaceful life, he's got to kill a crap ton of people and become strong enough to implement this peaceful life. Well, no, it's not necessarily that he has to kill a bunch of people to implement that peaceful life. It just kind of ends up working out that way where he is kind of forced into it, right? Where he's Mm. forced into a situation where he has to kill someone or he has to fight someone or something like that, you know? And it's, and again, it's not that he's just doing it just because he is like put in the situation. So like the orc Lord incident, right? He's Mm. not killing them just to kill them. It's because he's forced into a situation or a position where he has to. And then he takes guess, everyone else yeah, in. Like, he, he takes them all, everyone else that's, that's survived or alive after the fact in. So he's not um, just, you know, hey, go about your life. He's like, I'll take you in. You'll become, you're going to provide the, this, you're going to do that and everything like that. So I guess, yeah, I mean, he became public enemy number one, not just because, well, not public enemy number one, but he became a public enemy mm-hmm. because everyone else were, was putting their own ambitions on him like well this is what i would do in this situation so he must be doing the same thing we got to stop it and it's just the confusion that caught that that the chaos that caused all of this was kind of funny in my mind one misunderstanding misunderstanding after another just made it to where he was who was already overpowered just became a monstrosity okay yeah and eventually i feel like he'll be able to I guess be the one to enforce, even though he he's not going to be, he'll be the one who's able to push back for a society that he deems worthy. Does that make sense? Vaguely. Yeah. I mean, there, there, honestly, there's a lot that really happens to this anime. There's a lot that goes on in here. There's, you know, a point at which, um, you know, he, he, uh, really tries to, to grow and grow the relationships and everyone starts, like getting afraid or they're, they're looking at it as like, we need to create this and we need to validate him, so to speak. So when he goes to the Dwarven kingdom, right, the King Mm -hmm. realizes the strength of potential and he has him watch. And and so he's like, we need to go there and we need to, you know, make sure that we're, you know, we're, we're, we're on the right path, you know, to, Mm. to gain the strength, right. To, to be their allies because he, foresaw that in the future that that some next level stuff was going to happen and i'm honestly glad and happy that that he looked at beyond the fact that he was a monster right saw yeah. the potential saw the strength for it um and and uh continued you know like to to strive for those connections so to speak you know it, it goes it goes towards the way that the world is being built and everything. And it's honestly one of the, again, it's one of the better parts of the the show. The world building that we see is yeah. it makes the show everything. Else, like you could have a, a super powered person wanting to make their own way. And you know, the, the show is a flop because right. there's, there's what are the reasons? Well, what are your, what are your troubles? What are your, and the thing I like about Rinru is he's not fighting for himself. He's fighting for others. Yeah. And when he finally meets, um, ah, I'm drawing a blank on her name. The mask chick, where he gets the mask from. Oh, I, I know. He who starts you're... with an SH. Uh, it's not Shinsui. No, I know who you're talking about, though. Yeah, it's, it's the the woman who um, was summoned from another world who had infrit um, inside of her. Um, Shizu. Crap. Shizu. I knew it started with an SH. Um, and like he saw her and was like, "You're you you're the one I love. You're the one that." That, that's that been destined to me i saw a vision of you and of course tragically she dies and he's like i'm gonna get revenge for you so he now he's got a mission unto himself he's got a purpose other than peace and when you realize the difference between his power and the potential power of those that are for lack of a better way too strong to care i guess that, that'd be a good way to put it you realize just how much further he has to go and it is so nice to see that great well i mean it sucks to see that you could have if you were in that position you could have wiped them off the face of the earth and and not really cared all that much but the fact that 
you didn't care and you you have now as a show a mountain to climb so to speak right uh, an objective but he that, he also sees that too at the exact same time when he meets uh Milim, who's one of the dragon lords and or not dragon lords uh yeah, demon lords demon lords thank you um and he finds out like there are a lot of people that are crazy strong and a hell yeah. of a lot stronger than he is and and so What's interesting and what sets him apart from everyone else is like she, you know, she asks him straight up. Is like, do you want? Don't you want to become a demon lord? He's like, no, nah, I got enough on my plate. I don't want that. I don't need people coming to try and attack me all the time. <laughs> she goes, I think I'll do it for you. Then you don't yeah. want to do that. I want to fight you. <laughs> yeah, like so. So there's there is that. The fact that she's so so strong, like to to a really scary level, I would say, um, for no reason. Like she fights and she has fun, but when she's serious, she just wrecks everything. There's there's no competition. Like before her feat of strength, I thought, okay, Rinmaru could have a problem, but eventually, you know, it, it'll be okay. No, she's straight. Uh, there was a I, uh, too much power in one person in my mind. Well, that's the thing, right? So instead of her being reincarnated. Right. And th- they're the person that has o- that's OP is all hell. You're you're given the fact that one uh, Rimuru is not uh, reincarnated, overpowered as all hell. And and it's there's other people that are far stronger than he is. It's just he needs to progress to a point to where he can stand on equal footing to not that's die a from a single story. sneeze. <laughs> Achoo, you're dead. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, no, it, it's so nice. And the, the progression, the future that you can possibly see here the future that has the potential to to be is, is just wonderful and the really really worrisome thing for me is the lack of at least the way that i saw it and the, the thing i liked rinru above everybody else he cared about life you know what i mean he yes. cared about the impact and when so when you're summoned to this world you're typically a kid and you got to grow into this power but you'll end up dying because it's a power overlord. There's, there's no, you're not born of that world. So you don't really have a regulator for all that power. Does that make sense? Yes. And Rinmaru upon um, Shizu's death finds out that she was a teacher and her job was to teach these, these people, these summons because she's much older than them because she had a superior spirit in for it placed inside of her. Yes. And her job was to teach these other kids, because when you're as strong as these kids, you're not going to listen to anybody normal, because why would I listen to you? I can beat you up. Very immature. Well, the reason but, the, the reason why that she was tra- teaching them and training them is because she was trying to give them kind of a semi mostly normal life and figure out a way to save them because mm-hmm. they would be dying soon anyways. And it's not that she knew how to do it or she was ordained to teach them because of this or that or because she had the spirit it's what she wanted to do ultimately that's what she chose yeah. to do yeah when you're as strong as she is you don't you're not told what to do you you choose what to do and that's that's hey oh well, i mean there, there are for. a lot of people that find her really strong but there are other people that know that that how strong she is and they can beat her they just look up to her mm. i mm, okay I didn't know that part. I thought that she was just super strong, mainly because she was a summon and then in for it. Um, I didn't realize there was a bunch of people that just could murk her. Um, but what I thought was quite interesting is upon her death, Rimuru, who was reincarnated rather than summoned, goes, you know what? These kids need some assistance. They need some help. I'm going to go do that for her. I'm going to do that in, in, in her place. Well, it, and, to be fair, he he doesn't exactly say it like that or, or view it like that. He goes... I'm going to do fulfill part of my promise and go help them because that's what he ultimately promised her. Like what one of the promises is that he would go help them. He's just like not doing it because he wants to. He's doing it because he's honoring the request of Shizu. I guess. I mean, I saw it as in my mind, that's one of the same. He wanted to honor the promise. He wanted to do that. So in my mind, that was, but yeah, I can see where you're coming from with that. Um, but what I was saying was he went there and they respected him because he was strong and he could give them manga. <laughs> Mo- mostly because of that, but it, he had to earn it and show that he was stronger first and get to oh, that. Point. 100%. So 100%. And he would, because of that, he was able to figure out which element they would probably be most associated with. 
which and he did more research and I thought it was really awesome that the answer didn't just immediately present itself. He had to search for it. He had to find it. He had to like actively go after it rather than shit just happening to him. You know what I mean? Right. And I'm not, I don't think it was the finale of the first season, but it was close to it when he was able to save the kids. There was one spirit in particular that I found troubling because it was like a future. Well, that's what they claim and and that's what they, they view. But Honestly, at that point, we'll start getting into more conjectures or views and feelings and and the random spark notes that you chose to read at what point. Oh, yeah, right. So mm-hmm. I feel, Rick, How'd at this know? point, How did you know? Is going to be a great spot for us to to leave a rating. How about you? Okay. I can work with that. All right. So on a scale of up to ten, sir, how would you rate this? I would rate this a solid nine. Okay. Solid nine. The okay. only reason it's not a 10 in my mind is the last little bit was episode 25 was just a recap. Again, fangirling all day long, but I really did not find the, the level of adoration that Voldora gives Rin Maru to, to be pleasant, I guess. It, it was unsettling for me. You um, try, try being isolated and alone for 300 years and have someone oh, actually come by and talk to you, you know, and I'd carry on a conversation. There, there you go. You know, I can understand you know, it. That talks I, to me all week. I'd go crazy. Right. So there you go. N- then you can completely understand where, where he is no, coming no. from. I still find it annoying. Yeah. But yeah. All right. But yeah, that's why it's not a 10. And uh, you, sir? It's a great question. Um, come on, give mm, your four or something. I mean, like, if you want me to give it a four, I'll give it a four. <clears throat> I mean, it is, it is your honest opinion. You just dislike this show so much. Right. Point, pointing out a lot of the <laughs> facts and, and things that are counter to your mm-hmm. rose-colored mm-hmm. goggles that dislike. you wear. <laughs> uh, for me, I'll go with an eight. I'm going with an eight because when the progression was a little slow, there were certain points of it or certain times where I just felt it a little aggravating or annoying. Uh, they did have a couple of points in the anime where there were a couple of episodes, especially kind of towards the end where it just kind of felt shoehorned in. I understand that they're trying to explain what's going to go on, explain what's happening or explain what will happen or kind of give you a taste for it. I just felt it deterred from the story as a whole. Um, the progression I find a little bit weird, but enjoyable, but it's just not 100 percent my taste. So. That's why I'm giving it an eight. The artwork is nice. The solid the music for when it is there is solid. It's good. Um, the comedy in it, it's really great. I, you know, there are a lot, plenty of funny moments, plenty of funny points in there. So you, it's definitely a show that's well worth the watch. Um, so yeah, eight for me, nine for you next mm-hmm. week's choice. As we uh, alluded to earlier, uh, we're going to be talking about season two of that time. I got reincarnated as a slime. Uh, I know that Rick's looking forward to it. I know that I'm looking forward to it. Uh, and, uh, that's honestly it. That's all I got. I got nothing else, sir. You got anything else? I'm good. All right. Wonderful. Well, uh, if you thought we got something right, something wrong, did it too much justice, not enough justice, plan all went off in the weeds, just plain all being dumb or anything like that. Feel free to reach out to us. We have all our contact information for you available in the show notes, as well as on featured anime podcast.com. If you want to become a patron here, the pre and post show content that we usually put out with every episode, you can go to patreon.com slash featured anime podcast. A dollar a month will get you access to that bonus content. And if you want to help support us through other means, uh, we do have affiliate links for you in the show notes as well. It's always uh, very much appreciated. And we do uh, appreciate anything that you do. If you click on those links, you purchase anything using them. We do get a little bit of a kickback and it is very much appreciated. Or you can buy our own merch at shop.featuredanimepodcast.com. And until next time, I'm Jack. I'm Rick. And we'll see you next time.